good morning. Is that a good morning? Thank you. This is a great day to be on uh, Palmer Lake. Look what happened. The sun. And it's warm. During our planning, we thought we'd probably run into snow and wind and snow drifts. But look at what we got today. Well, good morning again, and thank you for attending this uh, Veterans Day tribute to witness the dedication of William J. Crawford Memorial. This northern El Paso County memorial site has been graciously provided by unanimous support of the El Paso County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Tim Wolken, El Paso County Director of Community Services, as a point of contact with the Crawford Memorial Committee to make this site a welcome part of El Paso County, the town of Palmer Lake, and the Tri-Lakes community. The memorial is what I'm standing on, is 40 feet in diameter and designed to replicate the United States Army Congressional Medal of Honor with five white star points. This point over here to my right, the point is exactly due north. The large stones embedded in concrete before me were from the creek bed adjacent to Bill Crawford's home in Palmer Lake. The stones have, has a, have plaques that were placed in the Palmer Lake, placed there by the, uh, excuse me, the uh, Palmer Lake Historical Society and displayed in the parking lot path entrance that you came in from May 26, 2001. The, the uh, celebrity rocks were located to their new location as part of the residence history of William J. Crawford. The point of interest on these rocks, if you looking at the, uh, the plaques, and you're kneeled down, you can see that the left face of the rock resembles Mount Hermon, and the other resembles Sundance Mountain, where the star is at. I would like to recognize our distinguished guests in the audience, Mr. and Mrs. Ed and Beverly Kite. Beverly is the daughter of Bill Crawford and family. Please stand up. Thank you very much. Fantastic woman. Patient love for her family and her dad. Um, Terry Carver, Colorado House of Representatives, District 20. Stan Vanderwolf, El Paso County Commissioner, District 3, includes the town of Palmer Lake. Tim Wolken, is Tim here today? Oh, there's, what are you doing out there? <laughs> Tim Wolken is the Director of Community Services. Carl McDaniel, Veteran Services Officer of El Paso County. And he's out there. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to also recognize the town of Palmer Lake, Palmer Lake Historical Society, and Palmer Lake Volunteer Fire Department. And they were going to have a truck out here this morning, but unfortunately there was a, a fire over a monument and they've been uh, required to take care of that. Crawford Memorial Committee offers a huge thanks and appreciation to those who made the memorial construction possible. Their unselfish, uh, volunteering, and in-kind labor and gift of materials in a timely, professional manner is a result of this amazing memorial. Their scheduling and giving of time is a very busy summer construction period. They, they kept the project on track. Simply put, we recognize each of you for your committed, patriotic, and truly commendable skills. You are greatly appreciated by the Crawford family and the Tri-Lakes community. Thank you.
Those that made this possible in construction are Mer Martin Marietta, Jerry's Custom Concrete, uh, Tyson Nunn, Tri Lakes Building Company, John Cameron Architecture. Uh, by the way, John, where's John? John is the architecture of the rendering that we work from. Thank you, John. Vickery uh, the evacu uh, excavation, black diamond excavation, internal stoneworks, in a flash concrete plumbing, uh, Briggs contact, contacting services, mission landscapes and, and excavating, stone cabin designs, angry squirrel, tree removal. They did a beautiful job on these trees out here. They were a mess. Uh, rental center, Pioneer Sand and Materials, Crawford Memorial website, my son Brian Miller, Jim Nichols, Flagpole uh, and Flags, and then Carl uh, Hill, Dedication Barbecue. And uh, thank you to the caring and giving community in the Air Force Academy class of 1975 for their class contribution from across America. And we do have a representative from that class here where are you, Scott? He's here somewhere. Came up and introduced. There he is over here. Thank you. That class went together uh, across the nation and uh, made a very nice contribution uh, to this site. Thank you, Air Force. <laughs> Now, the special thanks to the Crawford Memorial Committee members who volunteered endless time from inception from March 2017 to the actual groundbreaking in June and the dedication today. Alicia Getty, Getty uh, Chairwoman, a veteran U.S. Army, owner of the Depot Restaurant. <laughs> David James Wilson, co-chairman, veteran U.S. Navy, owner of Tri Lakes Building Company, and sound system. Hey. Linda Wilson, secretary, District 38, school teacher, retired. John Cameron, veteran, U.S. Army, owner, John Cameron Architecture. Darby Kelly, veteran, U.S. Air Force, retired. And then uh, Andrew Shell, uh, veteran U.S. Army, Merrill Lynch. And Bill Miller, veteran U.S. Navy, President and CEO, Wounded Warrior USA. <laughs> great, <laughs> I get emotional because this is great <laughs> that uh, this thing has all come to a head. Thank you for your everyone for involved. Now at this time we're going to start the actual program. We would like to call on Mr. Ed Kite, son-in-law, for the invocation. Can we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we know that the Word says that you are a spirit and we must worship you in spirit and in truth thy word is truth and thy word from second chronicle 7 14 says if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then I will hear their prayer from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. And Lord, what a privilege it is to be standing in a community of people of patriotism who have a desire to honor one of their own who his life's mantra was God and country. Thank you, Lord, for all of those who have contributed so unselfishly to this. 
And we pray your blessing on each and every one that has a part. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. United States Air Force Academy, Honor Guard, Post Colors. Okay, I would like you to turn your attention to the flagpole for the ceremony of our new flag. This morning ceremony includes this assembly to witness an important patriotic and solemn purpose to dedicate and present the permanent flagpole and flag of our country, Old Glory, to the W.J. Crawford Memorial by the American Legion Tri Lakes Post 9 11 and the Veterans of Foreign War Post uh, 78 29. I gotta turn this mic, mic off for a second. Just, yeah, don't touch the mic. I think we can proceed now. The honor, guard. the honor guards will remain uh, at attention. Please raise the flag and sing. We all, everyone, please uh, sing the Star Spangled Banner with the confetti group. Thank you, ladies.
you know, if you go rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, led by Justin Giddens, Boy Scout Troop 9, and accompanying him is Boy Scout Troop 17. Gentlemen, enter. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you. This morning we have the privilege of having a, a friend, not a long friend, but a friend, a veteran friend, uh, Mr. Robert Bob McLaughlin, Mount Carmel Veterans Service Center Chief Operating Officer. Bob, a 29-year U.S. Army Colonel retired veteran who deployed several times during his tenure in the Army in Bosnia, the Horn of Africa, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Married to his wife, Cindy, and they have five children. <coughs> Bob knows firsthand the challenges often created by military service and is using his passion and knowledge of our community to lead the Mount Carmel Veterans Service Center, ensuring that the center is a beacon of support for military veterans and their families. Bob was appointed to the Colorado Department of Veterans Affairs in 2016, which provides him with great insight into the needs of the veterans throughout the state. He also serves on ser uh, several local boards, including Pike, uh, Pike Military Care Network Advisory Board and the Colorado Springs Military Affairs Council. Bob is originally from Massachusetts as a patient New England sports fan. I personally have had the privilege to know Bob with his passion to create Mount Carmel from a concept to the reconstruct a gutted building to a magnificent military veterans and family support facility. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Bob McClough. Well, good morning, everybody. It's indeed an honor for me to be here to pay tribute to a true American hero, William J. Bill Crawford. He represents all that is good in our country, patriot, hero, family man, and humble servant. Today, we are gathered here to recognize his heroism with this incredible memorial, but more importantly, to celebrate the patriot and humble servant that he was throughout his life. This day is special also because we honor veterans, most of you in the audience. I believe that Bill would feel most comfortable knowing that we are taking time to pay respects to those who have served. He once said that a real hero are those who never came back from the, from the war. We all celebrate as veterans service and sacrifice, and from where I stand, you all look pretty good today, and I know Bill would feel the same way. So thank you all, veterans, for your service. As most of you know, Bill was a native of Pueblo and is memorialized in the Hall of Heroes, the National Medal of Honor Memorial with a larger-than-life statue celebrating his heroism. Of course, he was proud, but, hum but as a humble servant, thought it was a bit much. Pueblo is known as the home of heroes. Four Medal of Honor recipients, two of the, of the four, including Bill, graduated from Central High School, the only high school in America with two Medal of Honor recipients as graduates. Pretty remarkable. Your program shows his heroism through the Medal of Honor citation. 
And if you hadn't had a chance to read the citation, uh, before you leave here today, take time to read his citation. When he was asked about his actions that day, 13 September 1943, Bill would always say, it was just another day in my life. But it was certainly much more than that. Private Crawford at the time displayed incredible heroism in the face of grave danger under enemy fire on his own initiative. His actions saved many and allowed his unit to accomplish the mission. Most of you who have served in Warriors often think, how would I react under intense combat? Bill certainly demonstrated to all of us just what true heroism is with his actions that day. What some of you may not know is that he was taken prisoner by the Germans in the very next battle and listed as missing in action. On that day, as his unit advanced, Bill stayed behind to care for a wounded comrade and became surrounded by the enemy, again demonstrating his willingness to put others first. Because of his status as missing in action, the medal was actually presented to his family twice, once to his dad by General Terry Allen at then Camp Carson while he was in captivity and assumed dead, and a second time to Bill in 1984 by President Reagan, and that's another story which I'll share with you in a bit. In discussions with Bill's daughter Beverly, I learned many things about this patriot and humble servant. First, while well, as a POW, he learned about his medal from his German guards. They actually treated him with more respect because of his heroism and allowed him a few privileges, but not much. Bill was also a Golden Gloves boxer. He actually used these skills while in captivity. One day, a German guard butt-stroked Bill in the head, knocking him to the ground. Bill retaliated by punching the guard in the jaw and knocking him out. <laughs> Bill actually thought this was the end of his days, but the prison commandant actually apologized for the guard's action which Bill was able to continue and ultimately be released back to the country that he loved, but not before being forced march for 52 days and 500 miles, subsisting on one potato a day. Pretty unbelievable. Bill was repatriated to the U.S. in 1945, separated from service for a few years, and moved to his house right here in Palmer Lake, I learned that when Bill returned to this country, he said he would never leave U.S. soil again, but, he, but as a humble servant and willingness to serve, he actually left a few more times while on active duty. But more importantly, the very next year, he married Elaine, Eileen on January 13, 1946, and they were married for 50, year, 50 years. Um, Beverly and Ed are here as a testament to their love. Beverly has three children and six grandchildren living his legacy. This memorial is certainly a fitting location because Bill and his wife would always walk their dog right here around the lake and Beverly assures me that the two of them are smiling down on us right now as we conduct this ceremony. Because Bill was such a patriot, after a short leave from the Army, and a few jobs to include a stent with the VA in Denver, he decided to re-enlist. He continued to serve for 20 plus years as a career, but as you can imagine, as a Medal of Honor recipient, he was involved in several unique experiences along the way. In 1951, he was asked through the Department of Defense and Army to be a technical advisor for the movie Force of Arms, for which he was very proud and represented the military in Hollywood to make sure that the actor William Holden had everything right when it came to portraying the army fighting in Italy. In 1958, he was called upon again, along with six other Medal of Honor recipients, to intern the Tomb of the Unknown, soldiers both from World War II and Korea. Again, an honor that he was very proud of. As I stated earlier, Bill did leave U.S. soil to serve. In 1951, he served in Panama, during that stint, he had an opportunity to return home for Christmas. 
Again, demonstrating his humility, Bill walked from the bus stop to his house in a blazing snowstorm, not wanting to disrupt his wife, where he was welcomed joyously by his daughter. You all should have seen the look and smile on Beverly's face when she was telling me that story. Bill also served in Korea in the early 60s. During that time, he was called back to the Rose Garden by President Kennedy to pay tribute to all Medal of Honor recipients. Once again, Bill was honored but humbled by the experience. Toward the end of his career in the late 60s, Bill returned here to Colorado to serve as a recruiter. A recruiter, that's the New England in me. <laughs> a job that he loved. He was also a people person and enjoyed representing the Army to young men and women throughout the state. Bill retired active duty in 1967 and stayed here in beautiful Colorado in his home right here in Palmer Lake. He took some time to be with family and fix up the house, but he became restless and again received the call to serve. He wanted again to be with young men and women dedicated to service. So. He went to the Air Force Academy just wanting to be near young patriots and join, and join the Air Force Academy team. You can imagine, with his experience being a Medal of Honor recipient, that the Air Force Academy would certainly have a cush job for him. But that was not the case. The only thing that was open was a position as a janitor. Again, demonstrating his humble servant attitude, Bill took the job just to be near the cadets. He served in that capacity until 1977, never telling anybody that he received the Medal of Honor. Almost unbelievable. But, as you can imagine, the cadets are resourceful, and it was a member of the class of 71 that discovered he had received the medal. They were all extremely proud of him, but he continued to serve, and in his humble nature deflected any attention. Although once discovered, he did take the opportunity each year to address the class with life lessons and motivation. It was not until 1984 that the cadets found it fit to get Bill appropriately recognized by then the Reagan administration. They realized that a sitting president had never presented him the medal. So, President Reagan's staff offered to fly Bill and his family to D.C. to present the medal. Bill said, absolutely not. It is, it is far too expensive. And you can imagine we're talking about government dollars here. <laughs> Bill said, I'm very satisfied. I already have the medal. And we don't need any pomp and circumstance. So the Reagan administration offered to present Bill the medal while President Reagan presided over the graduating class of 1984. Bill reluctantly accepted conditionally, stating that it must be a small private ceremony, but as you can imagine, President Reagan wasn't having any of that, and they presented the medal to Bill in front of the whole class of 84 with onlookers. Once again, Bill was proud, but humbled by the experience. He continued to serve the community after retirement, and true to form, was very humble and proud of his community. After Bill passed in 2000, he was honored with several other ways in this community. There's a stretch of highway near here that bears his name. There's a VFW post that bears his name. In 2011, the Reagan family again connected with Bill's family, specifically Beverly, to get a picture of Bill receiving the Medal of Honor from President Reagan to add to the Reagan Library. In a letter, Dated March 22, 2011, Nancy Reagan wrote to Beverly, presenting the Medal of Honor to your father for his most courageous acts in service of his country was one of the most significant moments of my husband's presidency. And perhaps even more significant is the Crawford House in Colorado Springs, which offers housing services for veterans recovering from addiction the Crawford House has been in existence since 2002. I believe that Bill would be especially proud of that legacy and again, those in need. Something that he always did throughout his life. Let me conclude today by sharing some lessons that Bill taught Colonel Retired James Mashka, 
while he was a cadet at the Air Force Academy. I believe that these 10 things can apply to your everyday life, and as you leave here today, in tribute to this great American, take heed to this simple wisdom. <clears throat> Be cautious of labels. Everybody deserves respect. Courtesy makes a difference. Take time to know your people. Anyone can be a hero. Leaders should be humble. Life won't always hand you what you think you deserve. Don't pursue glory, pursue excellence. No job is beneath a leader. Life is a leadership laboratory. Bill was a true patriot and hero. He valued family, faith, and freedom. For years to come, this spot will serve as a reminder to everyone who visits as his, of his patriotism and heroism. But it is the way that he lived his life after receiving the Medal of Honor that is most inspirational. Humble servant, man of faith, who always put others first on the battlefield and in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. That's uh, totally inspiring. Uh, what an individual. Humble, be humble. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have, I, I missed it on the menu, and on the agenda. Menu. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, we have before us uh, What's More American, Palmer Lake Elementary School Children's Choir by uh, Diane Jensen. Let's welcome them, please. future of America, right here. <laughs> this is a side note while they're leaving the stage. Uh, the tree that's pine tree, the blue spruce tree behind me, they planted back in 
Linda, where are you at? What year? It's on the sign? No, it's not. Ray, you need glasses. Take the there's no there's no date on that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they planted the, the school planted that tree years and years ago as a little stub. And uh, with the arid condition up here, uh, you can see how much it, <laughs> it has grown, but it's surviving. And we're going to, uh, our landscaping committee is going to help, help nourish it along. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, call up uh, Terry and, uh, for a tribute from the Colorado Legis uh, Legislature. <laughs> I'll get it out. Sorry, guys. Terry Carver. Let's see if, if you can hear me, right? Great. I'm vertically challenged. State of Colorado, the House of Representatives, convened in the 71st General Assembly, hereby extends our honorable recognition to Master Sergeant William J. Crawford, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. Throughout history, the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces have risked their lives to protect our freedom. No one exemplifies this spirit more than United States Army Master Sergeant William J. Crawford. In September of 1943, while serving with 142nd Infantry Regiment, 36th Infantry Division, he distinguished himself with acts of gallantry above and beyond the call of duty when he raced through intense enemy fire to detonate hand grenades on enemy gun sites. For his exemplary service and bravery, Private Crawford earned the Congressional Medal of Honor, the United States military's highest award. Upon his return from the war, William Crawford married, had two children, and worked at the U.S. Air Force Academy. On behalf of the citizens of Colorado, the members of the Colorado House of Representatives are proud to join in the recognition of Master Sergeant William J. Crawford and the dedication of the William J. Crawford Memorial on Veterans Day, November 11th, 2017 at Palmer Lake, Colorado. Sign, Crisanta Duran, Speaker of the Colorado House of Representatives. Thank you, Terry. This time we'd like to present a wreath with Linda Wilson and Beverly. Please come forward, Beverly, with Linda. We'd like to present a ribbon cutting with the Crawford family and Alicia and John holding the ribbon. If you you and the family would please. The agenda calls for America the Beautiful. But we're going to do two two songs. We've just moved down to uh, Before It's Well With My Soul for the audience. Now I'd like to call on Ed for the benediction. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are now at the end of a wonderful, wonderful program, a commemoration ceremony. What a wonderful community, Lord, 
that would gather around both with finances and labor and inspiration to make something like this possible. And I would like to quote just a small excerpt from President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, which says, It is rather now for us the living to be dedicated to the proposition which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. Help us to all get the vision. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm calling the uh, ladies up for American review. I know I'm changing things around here a little bit, but in conclusion, on behalf of the Crawford family and the Crawford Memorial Committee, thank you all for participating and attending this tribute honoring William J. Crawford, Master Sergeant, U.S. Army, World War II Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. Ladies.
Buglers across America, Bugler, Troy Hansen, veteran, U.S. Air Force, retired. Dismissed.